welcome to this program of purpose of life today we're going to talk about an interesting topic in the title time management and joining us is peter christopher who's a time management expert and also a consultant a management consultant coming from the corporate world peter welcome to the program thank you ashwin we've been talking about time management and uh, just for the sake of viewers uh, people who missed the last episode should watch that episode and then come to this episode but today Peter, I would like to start with a very uh, fundamental practical problem, both not just in the corporate world, but this is a problem with many successful entrepreneurs. Mm. One of the things we, uh, we find in uh, life is you got to work hard and str to struggle, work hard, you plan, but you have to do a lot of uh, stress, you go through a lot of stress as you come up in life. Yeah. And most of successful people, I'm not saying all, many successful people, when they look back, when they cross 70 years and, uh, you know, when they, they are successful. Yeah. But when you meet them at 70 years or 75 years, they look back and say, you know, I've gained so much, but I've lost my family. I've lost time to spend with my daughter. I was not there for a birthday. I was not uh, there, uh, you know, when there was something important. I was not there. I find that... Uh, guilt coming out differently now one side successful they've got something in life another side they have lost something my question to you as a consultant especially with time management is how would you respond to somebody asking you this question saying i have done worked hard but i have gained something but i have lost something what's your response to people who ask you that question yeah before that in fact i would even add one more example uh, of a known family, for their daughter's uh, marriage, the husband and wife had to decide who will run the office and who will go to marriage. Oh my! Then they decided uh, the father will go to marriage and the wife will uh, stay back in the business and manage it. Mm. So only the father went uh, for the marriage of the daughter because uh, he had to take the hand of the daughter and give it to the bridegroom. So these are the challenges people really uh, face it. Mm. Uh, as you rightly said, in one area, for example, the profession or business, they are successful, but uh, they lost on the other side. The major root cause for this is, is people are struggling to understand the value of each of the aspects of life. I would highlight four areas. Mm. Number one, our profession. Usually everybody gives maximum priority, you know, premium priority to profession. Number two, uh, the time for family. Number three, the time for God. And number four, the time for self, the personal time. Uh, you know, so very often our business uh, stands before us. Our professional uh, roles, responsibilities stand before us. So usually we get carried away with that. So our biggest challenge for doing these things is, and carrying pain for future is, uh, understanding the right value that each of these four say, parts of our life deserve it. Number one, when we num understand it, we should be able to give the right priority to them. For example, in terms of time, the time given to office, the time given to family, the time taken for personal life, that's very important. But most of the time, as you rightly observed, people are really struggling. So the root two, uh, two for twinfold uh, root cause is understanding the value of each of them and giving the right time each of these four components in the life deserves the time we have to uh, give that's very very important so peter from what you're saying is giving the value for what is important is what you're mm. saying all the four are important but uh, to which do you prioritize but the question is how do i learn to prioritize what are the steps i need to understand to understand family is important but if i don't get this sales order i lose out on that income so, which is important, a question comes. So, how do you really unfold that in a very practical way? Yeah, we cannot give a, you know, a single solution to different people because their priorities, their mm. values, their challenges are very, very different. Mm. Somebody will be able to balance profession and the family. Mm. Somebody has to focus only on profession because that is, you know, that demands mm. his presence very important. I would use an example. When Mullah Nasruddin, mm. He was uh, uh, teaching his students. One day he brought a glass jar and he brought three uh, different bags also. Mm. Then he students were curious. They were asking what is in that. Then he said, 
uh, I have uh, small rocks, I have pebbles and I have sand. He asked them, can I put all of them into uh, one uh, glass jar? All of them in one jar? Uh, mm. All of them into one jar. And they said, no, it is not possible. Then he said, let us give a try. Then he put all the uh, big stones or rocks into that uh, jar and they all filled and uh, it has come up to the rim of the mm. bottle. Then they said, yes, you cannot put the other two. Mm. Then he took the small pebbles and started putting them into that jar and started shaking them so that mm. all the pebbles got into the gaps oh. and they went and filled. The students mm. were surprised. Mm. Then he asked them, can I put the sand? Mm. They said, no, it is not at all possible. Mm. Then he started putting the sand and started shaking, shaking the bottle sand also. and the whole quantity of sand has gone into this. Now he asked them, what are you learning? Mm. Then they said, we had an opinion it was wrong. Then he said, that is fine, but what you are learning out of it? Then uh, some student uh, got up and uh, said, sir, these three things are talking about priorities of life. Mm. In our life, we have to decide uh, what is pebble, what is uh, stone and what is sand. Mm. Uh, we can probably think like this, the big rocks or big stones are the most important things of life for somebody. It mm. is very relative. Mm. Somebody will say family, somebody right. will say ministry or uh, God, somebody will say my personal uh, actualization, personal fulfillment is more important. It is different, very mm. relative. So, we should decide what are the most important thing as big as the rock in our life. Then he should decide what are the second important things. They are important, but they are of uh, slightly lesser priority mm. in nature. And what are very ordinary things of my life, good to have, even otherwise it is not a loss. For somebody probably, profession is very important. For a mm. businessman, profession is a rock. Mm. For somebody, family is also a rock. He may rate that my time for God or time for personal life is like a sand. Mm. For somebody else may think that I am in a actualization process, self-actualization process. So, for me, self is also important. I have to do yoga, I have to do this, that. For somebody, uh, his sports is very important. He may not play, but he may watch sports. He will sacrifice anything. He may take leave from the office. Mm. All these things can happen. So, my point is, we each one has to identify what is the most important thing in your life. Mm. Profession or some at one age profession may be important. When he is towards retiring, he may take an earlier uh, life so that he can spend time with family and mm. the personal life. Mm. So, we have to decide what are our uh, rocks, what are our pebbles and what are our sand. Once we prioritize, then we should be able to allot our time, mm. the time required for each of them on daily basis preferably or on weekly basis mm -hmm. so that you know, all are taken care of. Peter, I think uh, from what you are saying is prioritize. Uh, all are equal, the sand, pebble or the rock, all three are important but it is what you prioritize. What are the common mistakes which people commit when they actually plan this time management, when they plan things, there are some very fundamental mistakes which people commit and they are not able to make the mark. What are some mistakes which commonly, which you see as a consultant? I see four types of mistakes people are committing. Mm. The first one is uh, people get into action without uh, planning the time. Okay. Uh, then they do not know where, when to stop. Mm. So, they jump into it without planning. They jump into it. They are jumping into it without planning. So, uh, the solution is people have to make plan after, before uh, action. Mm. That is one thing. When people are making plan, very often people do not follow it. Mm. They do not action it. They have a plan that is in the paper, that is in the memory. Uh, it is something like a wish list. It is like a vision which is not planned, which is not added with a strategic plan for execution. So, it is a wish list. Uh, everybody makes a new year uh, resolutions. In another month, we are going to make new year resolutions. Mm. So, people make plans, but uh, they are not actioning it. This is the second type of problem. When they want to action it, when they are committing to action it, they are procrastinating. They made a plan, they may give a commitment. In the second case, they do not have a commitment, they have only a wish list. Mm. Here we have, they have a commitment, they desire to do it uh, after new year, one week they are going, somebody is going for walking systematically for one hour. But the point is gradually it is uh, reducing. Then the next morning he will get up, 
should I go today? It's a <laughs> Saturday. Uh, let me go in the evening. It's a holiday. Mm. I have he, enough he time. He himself makes a different plan. Ha, I call it procrastination. Procrastination. Uh, the, the, he he's committed to take an action, but the time of taking the action, he's procrastinating. That's a little dangerous, right? It's very dangerous mm. because it's very subtle. It's easy to procrastinate, but the point is we do not know when we are going to st take action, mm. stop and take action. So this procrastination is very uh, you know dangerous. That's why in the corporate world they use two different terms: postponing and adjourning. Postponing <laughs> is uh, just cancelling now, saying that I'll take action in future. Mm. Adjourning is uh, you know postponing with a time target. That's mm. very important. So mm. uh, we, we should not postpone. We have to adjourn. Mm. If somebody want to relax, that's okay. Let him be practical. But he should not relax regularly. <laughs> you know. So uh, at least if he want to relax, at least next ten days he should have action done properly. Mm. So postponing is another thing. And uh, sometimes we get on action and we want to really uh, take a break. Mm. Uh, a student, for example, on a Saturday, uh, he want to really study for ten hours, mm. and uh, he has to if he studies for say three hours or five hours. then he can take a 30 minutes break then what happens is when he takes a 30 minutes break uh, he should not take a break very early also mm. at least some 2 hours or 3 hours he should study in a stretch after reading the book for 30 minutes he cannot take a break correct he, you know he should spend enough time on it so when we take a break we should make it a point to come back mm -hmm. very often when we take a break it becomes a long break half an hour break becomes one hour one hour <laughs> break sometimes it becomes a six hours break mm -hmm. you know so <laughs> that is very important mm -hmm. so not planning and if they are planning they are not actioning if they are actioning they are postponing uh, if they are getting on real action uh, very whenever they take a break mm -hmm. that cannot become a very long break mm -hmm. if somebody studies or, or works for uh, some 5 to 6 hours mm -hmm. he can take a 30 minutes or even 60 minutes break mm -hmm. then after that he has to come back according to his own plan plan peter i think these four uh, points are very key uh, in my opinion and uh, i'm sure the viewers also understand that these are valuable lessons you are talking from practical experience uh, and uh, you know delaying is also when you say delay actually rightly said adjournment and uh, postponement. Uh, postponement these are two critical words and uh, uh, so i i strongly believe whatever you are saying there's a deep meaning to it and we are only touching on the surface yes uh, my next question is uh, you know is there any quick checklist points uh, one can use as a reminder to effectively Uh, effectively use time what are the key checkpoints okay one you saw about the problems but how can i uh, overcome this that's my question there are some few checklist points we can talk mm. first one is are we investing in life mm. or are we spending time are we investing in time or are we spending time when we are spending we have just spent it mm. if i uh, work 5 hours and i want to relax for 30 minutes i'm spending i'm not mm. investing whereas when i do the work or when a student is studying or uh, when a lady is cooking in the kitchen they are investing mm. so we have to ask a question by getting into activity mm. this activity is an expense of time for me or it's an investment of time for me you know so that can be a good uh, checklist mm. number one number two as we already discussed am i planning and doing things or just like that you know i start uh, doing the things another thing is when we make a plan am i going to according to my plan or am i uh, drifting a lot because when we start drifting it's very easy to get drifted we will never realize when mm. we get drifted for example uh, there is a unplanned visit tomorrow mm. there is an exam children are studying and uh, the you know poor lady of the house is controlling the children you cannot do this sit and study 7:30 dinner all these things she is saying but uh, there is something out of her control some guest some uh, friend or relative who has not visited long time unplanned visitor all in a sudden comes, comes. next 3 hours he is going to sit your children are also going to sit there and <laughs> waste time you know mm. so such drifts can happen so we have to be ruthlessly critical uh, to be to uh, comply to our plan at least 95% mm. and probably we can accommodate mm. some 5% mm. there we have to know no when the, to cut but when the guest comes you can't send the guest away also we can send the children to uh, say hello Correct. and go into your room and study Correct. instead of sitting in the hall and study Correct. so that kind of a planning adjustments exactly maybe 10 15 minutes they can relax if they bring their children mm. maybe some 15 minutes they, uh, our children can play with their children mm. and then they can go correct you know so or one child is having exam the other child is not having exam mm. uh, we can uh, leave the child who has an exam to go and study the mm. other so we can ask the other child to entertain their child correct. so being uh, when you said uh, you, so even that needs a little 
adjustment planning but however being sticking to the course of the plan yeah that's what you're talking about exactly yeah. mm. so this is something you know we have to take control mm. we have to comply to the plans that we have made we mm. to the schedules that uh, you know we are having mm. that is another important thing another thing is uh, do i do something proactively or do i do firefighting oh ho go to or firefighting firefighting uh, when i plan and do something mm. i am proactively doing the things when uh, i don't do it well then i am always in the firefighting mm. mode so very often i used to ask you know if i meet a ceo i will ask him if there is no crisis in your uh, office for the next one year no crisis mm. it's a good thing to have right <laughs> a, yeah. but i will ask them yeah. what your managers will do correct <laughs> be firefighting <laughs> <laughs> because they are so accustomed to do the firefighting mm. for you know by 80 to 90% of their working hours mm. they come without any plan there is a problem they take up the phone mm. they call the you know uh, onshore team uh, there is a fire i have a person in our team he, he is called uh, uh, emergency john okay in emergency situation he will work very actively okay normally he is very slow yes so we call him the emergency in emergency he is the best guy to have because his brain will work in super speed yes. but normally <laughs> it is very slow yes so in most of the in most of the cases we all are emergency jobs mm, correct you know so when we don't have a problem you know we are in a real problem correct because there is no problem to handle correct when we handle uh, problems yeah. through firefighting we feel very much yeah. full but you said you used the word pro act, you know you're getting preempting things how do you plan that what do you mean by that Uh, in a day for example uh, if, if somebody is in office for 10 hours mm. at least 8 hours he has to uh, you know uh, do the work productively according to his plans his schedules mm. and maybe 20% you know them he may tweak and uh, you know uh, he can take some uh, changes he mm. cannot be ruthless in the office uh, you know but if a junior is coming we can ask him to come later if a senior boss is coming we have to attend him mm. so so may at least 10 to 20% maximum we can you know accommodate changes mm. but at least 80% in a day we have to plan and do the work then mm. only there will be productivity in all the work that uh, we are doing mm. and the another thing is when you are doing the work uh, we should uh, ask whose work i am doing mm. uh, very often what happens is especially for the you know middle management and senior management people uh, juniors they have a plan to go by, day, by in, a, in a day the juniors bring in an issue and they get into that and when they resolve it they would already spend three more hours in that mm. so there is a beautiful uh, you know book i have read called uh, monkey management Hmm, monkey so management. monkey management the problems are like monkeys so everybody has their own monkeys on their shoulders very often what happens is somebody comes he takes his monkey and puts on your shoulder and goes away <laughs> so i remember once you know i had a manager so we were in a night shift so 10 o'clock was my dinner time so uh, I, i didn't take uh, you know home made uh, dinner on that day i had to go to ca- canteen so it will be closed by 10:30 my manager has come uh he came and uh, he st- uh, shared with me about a problem so i immediately picked up the phone and uh, called my colleague the other director in the us and this gentleman got you know got up from my table and went to his seat then another 2 minutes i ha- saw him carrying his you uh, know board uh, tiffin box and mm. going towards the pantry mm. but when i finished the problem it was 1:30 in the night oh my 3 mm. hours you know 3 and a half hours is fully gone into managing his monkey mm. <laughs> of so course the problem call. is my problem because mm. you know boy, he was working under me as a manager mm. but the point is he shifted it from his shoulder to my shoulder and walked away mm. and i had some other work that i stopped working i worked on this still i resolved it i was on it when i realized it was already 1:30 there was no pantry available in the mm. office so i didn't have the dinner on that day mm. because you know i started doing monkey management yeah but is it right or wrong you did the right thing it is right Uh, probably no i should have helped him to solve his problem mm. rather than i started solving his problem ah. it was a big lesson for me mm. so this is a checklist we should have i have to spend at least 80% of my day according to my priorities mm. so that no i will do i will be productive at least 80% of my day Correct. whereas somebody came he shifted his problem mm. uh, the problem can be handled by a manager or a director correct anybody can handle but the point is what he was supposed to do he conveniently he didn't do it intentionally mm. in fact he can he but happened to but it was a lesson to you yeah yeah and i took it on it excitedly mm. uh, then i learned that you know i should help my managers to solve their problem correct i should hand hold them i should give them direction i should make them to uh, win over it and clap for them mm. rather than i take it and they started clapping mm. for me 
Correct. That's a very valid point. Um, time is short, uh, Peter. We're going to talk about uh, God who saw who's a solution for all problems. Yes. <laughs> you know, you're talking about a manager and yeah. a director solving yeah. problem. But we're going to talk about the God of the Bible. And how does God of the Bible view time management? You just mentioned about a monkey problem. Uh, but technically, uh, you know, we talk about the God of the Bible who took the whole problem of what humankind was on the cross for no fault of his. Yeah. So that's a different context. But uh, he was specific about time. Three, three years, we, we, we see the Bible, the New Testament, with the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the three years of what Christ did. And in three years, his timing was so perfect. Perfect. And imagine if, we, if, 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 the, if the, the, the authors who wrote the Bible wrote for, example, if Christ would have lived for 15 years more or 20 years more, we would have read a different Bible, but it was three years, timed so perfectly. So we're going to talk about the God of the Bible and how he's seeing time mm. from his angle and how can we value God from a time perspective angle. That's the question. The God of the Bible is uh, time conscious, but he's also very specific to certain action points. Mm. One action point example, he bore the cross mm. for no fault of his. Correct. He took everything on him. But yet it was done in such perfect timing. Yes. Um, so from your experience as a time management expert, as a consultant, as someone who's constantly meeting people, how do you view the God of the Bible as someone who's respecting time and also keeping time from his perspective? So what's your take on that? God is always the ideal benchmark to benchmark with him, to learn from him and uh, follow his models. Mm -hmm. And when I see God in the Bible, he handles things in two different ways. Mm. There are times, as you rightly quoted, that perfect example of uh, taking the responsibility for redeeming the humanity. God took it on him 100%. God doesn't have to do it mm. because humanity, we human beings messed up and God takes a you know, course uh, di diversion from his original plans and comes and solves our problem. Here, he doesn't uh, put any uh, responsibility for us. He has 100% take took on him and you know, he has arranged everything. Uh, he didn't uh, involve any of the human beings like Adam and Eve in the discussion mm -hmm. process, ask them what you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and the triune God decided how to redeem humanity, sending the Savior from heaven. He has completely took on him. On the other side, there are times uh, when people were going to him asking for help. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was uh, helping them, but he was not fully taking the responsibility on him. Rather, he was uh, training them uh, to do the work and whenever needed, then only he was coming. Can this you give some examples from that point of view? Yeah. So when, for example, uh, you know, when the tax collectors came to him, the disciples and said, why your master doesn't pay the taxes, God could have created, <laughs> you know, some a few coins and uh, paid them. Rather, he called uh, Peter. And mm. he called the fisherman. He didn't call the tax collector. Mm. He called the fisherman, go and you know ca catch a fish. There will be a coin, pay that. He involved somebody. Mm. In another time, they came and said, Lord, it's three days where the people didn't eat anything. Why don't you feed them? Mm. And he turned back and said, you guys feed them. <laughs> <laughs> then they said, no, uh, no, our resources are very, very mm. limited. We don't have the money then for that. he them. said, we didn't have the money. Our resources are very less. It's half year's wages, all <laughs> these things they were telling. Then he said, okay, come on, what do you have? He said, only this much fish, this much uh, loaves. He said, bring it to me. Mm -hmm. And then he brought in God factor. He did a miracle. And uh, he didn't say them, you know, uh, feed them. Because mm -hmm. there were, uh, you know, 5,000 men alone, they mm -hmm. were there. Women were there, children, uh, all were there. So he cannot, uh, you know, uh, they cannot feed mm -hmm. them. There will be a mess. Mm -hmm. So he gave them an idea. You guys make them to, you know, uh, sit so in a room. So, God of order. God of orderliness. Again, we see the orderliness here. But he didn't do it. He could have commanded them, mm -hmm. but he assigned the talk to or task to them, asked them to arrange it. When they are finished, uh, when sat, were finished sitting, they uh, you know, uh, served them. When they served, again, he instructed them, go and collect the scrambles. <laughs> and he asked them, how much is there? All Follow Hollow. <laughs> so uh, beautifully, you know, he was uh, step by step, he was, you know, assigning the work mm -hmm. to them. 
he didn't uh, hundred percent take on him like he took on the you know matter of salvation. Mm -hmm. uh, here he was training them, molding them. Mm -hmm. So you know well, we also should uh, when we see God as a benchmark and to learn from Him, we also should uh, learn you know when to hundred percent jump. When not delegate to jump. and when to delegate. When to delegate, especially parents, for example. Mm. Sometimes parents are tempted to draw, you know, mm. do the drawing, <laughs> and so that the child will submit mm. the assignment. Mm. But the negative side of it, this uh, child will finish the homework, but the child failed the opportunity mm. of drawing that, you know, science drawing mm. herself. Correct. You know, so that is a real challenge. So mm. uh, each of us should know when to support others when to stand mm, outside back. the ring mm. and support the person to do his work. Mm. This is very, very important in time management. It's a very valid point, uh, Peter. Um, as time is short, uh, in this whole episode, we're talking about time management. What's the key takeaways we would like to tell our viewers uh, in listening to this conversation for the last 25 minutes? I would say uh, four takeaways. Plan and do the work. Plan and do the work. Never mm. get on action directly, number one. Number two, when you plan, don't procrastinate it. Mm. You have to get on action. In the, the first stage, we don't have a plan. So plan and do the work. Mm. Number two, you have a plan, you should commit to get on action. So not only plan is important, action of the plan is also very important. When you get on action, remember there is a risk of procrastinating. There is a temptation to procrastinate. So better to uh, you know keep a watch on the mm. clock, say that I have sat for as a student is sitting for studying, 5.30 he's sitting, till 8 o'clock I'm not going to get up from this desk, fix a time. Otherwise it's very tempting to get up and go, then mm -hmm. procrastinate, instead of sitting at 5.30 I will sit at 6 o'clock, all these things we may think. So uh, don't procrastinate. And the last thing is don't take a break in a short time of doing mm -hmm. some work, rather you know, work on it uh, mainly at least a you know, few hours, couple of hours and then take a break. When you take a break, make it a point to come back on time, within mm. a short span of time. It's not good to take five hours break after studying for one hour, after doing mm. one or two hours work. That's very important. So plan and do the work. When you plan, get on action. When you get on action, don't procrastinate. When you have to take a break, make it a point to come back. Peter, it's been lovely talking to you. So much takeaways. Uh, I think these are great uh, tips for uh, keeping a good foundation on time management. And uh, we would like to do more series. This is just the beginning. And uh, I believe that there's more to come. And uh, even as we uh, talk about two more programs, let's take it to two more, dive deep into time management. So this is the first two parts which we did. We, uh, and I strongly believe in the next two parts, there'll be more deeper things, more valuable things as for the viewers and for us. So once again, thanks a lot, Peter. I will see you again in the next interesting program on time management in the program Purpose of Life. Thank you, Ashwin, for having me here. Thank you, Peter. Friends, it's been a pleasure to talk to you and uh, there's two key words which Peter used. One is don't postpone but adjourn. There's a number there on the screen. Don't postpone but call us now and tell us what your feedback is. And uh, we'll be happy to take your feedback and we'll be happy to produce more content like these. Thank you for watching this program and uh, we'll see you again on another topic. But the key program is going to be Purpose of Life.